Daniel Cho. I'm gonna react to why Dana, Dana White privilege is X. Let's talk about Dana White privilege. You've probably heard of Dana White privilege, especially these last couple of days, as Dana White is pushing for a Colby Covington versus Leon Edwards fight. In one corner, you have a guy that hasn't fought in over a year, is two and two in his last four, with two of those losses being title shots, and is in many eyes undeserving of this title shot. And in the other corner, we have a guy that had to go on a 10 fight win streak, in many people's eyes wasn't getting a title shot when other undeserving fighters were, and still doesn't have the leverage in his fights despite being the champion and beating the guy in Kamaru Usman twice. This fight is the prime example of what having and not having Dana White privilege does to your career. And another guy that doesn't have Dana White privilege who's suffering this in his career is Bilal Muhammad who's fighting this Saturday. And speaking of this Saturday, as Aljo looks to continue his rise amongst the UFC ranks in his hometown backyard, Cejudo will be looking to take advantage of his shot at the belt. The fighters are getting ready for Saturday's main event. So let's begin with defining what Dana White privilege is. Simply put, having Dana White privilege is having the favor of the boss, and this favor can give you undeserving main card features, undeserving rankings, and more notoriously undeserving title shots. Let's go back two years. It's May 13th, 2021, and UFC 262 is headlined by Charles Oliveira and Michael Chandler, with the co-main being Tony Ferguson and Benio Dariush. In one of the press conferences leading up to this event, out of the mouth of one of combat sports' greatest minds, Tony Ferguson would coin the term Dana White privilege. You got Dana White privilege. It was honestly the perfect way to describe Dana White's preference and influence over UFC mm -hmm. fighters. See, this was Michael Chandler's second fight in the UFC, and he was already fighting for the title, making him have one of the shortest roads to a title. Charles Oliveira, on the other hand, to get to this point, had to go on an eight-fight win streak, and ironically enough, literally had the longest road to get to a title, as it took more than a decade and 28 fights to get to the belt. Because of this discrepancy, Tony would call out Michael Chandler for having Dana White privilege and thus the perfect term, a preferential treatment of certain UFC fighters, was born. So firstly, let's talk about the privilege, starting with Colby Covington, who in many eyes is the current poster child of Dana White privilege. Again, like we said in the beginning of the video, Colby Covington in many eyes has an undeserving title shot with his upcoming fight against Leon Edwards. Again, he hasn't fought since March of last year and stayed ranked as the number two contender despite Gilbert Burns getting two wins this year alone, Bilal Muhammad being on an eight fight winning streak. And I know Hamza Chemaev is at 185 pounds now, but he's fought more recently than Colby Covington and is still undefeated. Additionally, Colby has already had two title shots in his last four fights and lost both of them. Even though he had two very close- That last photo, that, that nigga nose look broken, bro. No funny shit. Fights with Kamara Usman. At the end of the day, he still lost them. So, why does he have the privilege? Well, it's simple. He sells fights. Colby Covington is one of the biggest, if not the biggest heel in the UFC. People will always tune into his press conferences whether you like him or hate him. His villain persona has been wildly successful for him since its conception, and the real irony is he was suffering from Dana White privilege deficiency before this. Patrick Avia made a great video on how Colby Covington's new persona has completely saved his career, but essentially back in 2017, despite being a winning fighter, Colby Covington was on the verge of getting kicked out of the UFC due to his kind of boring grind em out wrestling style and lack of persona. So after his Damian Maya fight in Brazil, he would call Brazil a dump, completely change his persona, and the rest is history. Though if Colby Covington is the current poster child of Dana White privilege, the all-time poster child has to be Conor McGregor. Connor in his prime is literally the epitome of Dana White privilege dictating anything he wanted to do during this time. So much so, he did something that no other UFC fighter at the time. Damn, Dana White's ha have favorites. He has favorite fighters. You know? he, ha he has his favorites. You know? Or any other UFC fighter right now could do, which is to switch sports, go box Floyd Mayweather, take home a big payday, and basically break every rule in the book. Friends. It's about the, it's about like, it's about which fighter like who who draws more like, who like who puts like asses to seats, you know like, I think they, that's what Dana White wants, you know. Zinganu wasn't even given a chance for a possible fight with Tyson Fury, and is one of the main reasons why Francis left. The
the organization entirely. Additionally, Conor McGregor can also just run the show at the Ultimate Fighter. In his last Ultimate Fighter appearance, he convinced Dana to bring back his friend at the time, Artem Lobov, despite him being eliminated in the first round of the tournament. And in this Ultimate Fighter appearance, he essentially is doing the same thing, bringing his guys and replacing some fighters at each chance to fight for a UFC contract. And finally, we have Michael Chandler. Like we said before, Michael Chandler was given the fast track to the title. Just two fights in, he was already facing Charles Oliveira for the title. But there should definitely be an asterisk next to Michael Chandler's name when it comes to Dana White privilege because even though he has it, I don't think many fans quite mind it. Every one of his fights are ultra exciting and sure, maybe he didn't earn the title shot or his high ranking and consistent opportunity at fighting the lightweight contenders, but he's proved that he can make fights competitive and exciting. And now we move on to the unprivileged, those who do not have Dana White's blessings, and one of those guys is Leon Edwards. Despite being on a 10 fight win streak at the time, Leon Edwards had to wait for both Colby Covington and Jorge Masvidal twice each before he can get his own title shot. Leon has always gotten the short end of the stick when it came to title shots, and even after KOing Kamaru Usman and then winning over him convincingly in the second fight, Leon still doesn't have the leverage as the champion to veto the Colby fight and have any say in who he fights next. And even said that Colby Covington had Dana White privilege. Mate, this Dana White privilege is there for real. <laughs> but at least the fans are with Leon Edwards. In the case of Bilal Muhammad, he might have it the worst considering that not only does he not have Dana White privilege, the fans don't like him. Bilal Muhammad has been a top welterweight for a long time, but because of his fighting style being so boring, and because he has little to no personality, he has been shunned by Dana White and the fans. Bilal has been on an 8 fight win streak and actually had a very exciting performance against, at the time, an undefeated Sean Brady. But because of the lack of fans he draws, he hasn't even been in talks of title contention. Though with this last minute fight this Saturday with Gilbert Burns, this could change his fate if he has a good performance and ultimately a win. Another guy that is on an 8 fight win streak looking to get a title shot is Benil Dariush. Though in this case, I think a lot of fans are starting to side with him. Despite being on an 8 fight win streak and a very exciting run that includes the domination of Tony Ferguson, the crazy spinning back fist KO of Scott Hoseman, and the recent pretty good win over Gamrot, he hasn't been in any serious talks for the title. However, with a potential win over Charles Oliveira and in general, the fans starting to side with Benil, it does look like he's going to start to gain some Dana White privilege. Though probably the worst case of not having Dana White privilege is Mighty Mouse. Despite being one of the greatest of all time, having had one of the longest title reigns in UFC history, Dana White traded Demetrius Johnson for Ben Askren right after he barely lost a controversial decision to Henry Cejudo. Again, Patrick Avia made a great video on Demetrius Johnson, but basically because Mighty Mouse was dominating a division that was not that competitive at the time and not selling that many pay-per-view buys despite being the champion, Dana White never really liked him and never really recognized him as one of the pound for pound best. Demetrius Johnson recounts the recounts recounts time Dana White called him a dumbass and you will see during the close fight white fight white flight fly weight division. Damn Dana. This nigga have his favorites. So you're probably asking by now how any of this is even possible how is it possible that one guy can have this much power over a sport that should be a meritocracy in most american sports there is a regular season that dictates the rankings of teams in most sports in general there's some type of tournament to qualify for or a tournament in general to dictate which teams face which to win though in the ufc it's Dana White and the matchmakers who solely decide who fights who and who is ranked above another. The big problem here is that Dana White and the UFC are both the promoters and the ones who control the rankings and obviously that's a huge conflict of interest. Now I'm not saying boxing is any more clean, but at least the rankings slash belt organizations and promoters on paper mind you are separate. See, it's a promoter's job to promote a fighter and their fights, and the incentive is to obviously make a lot of money, which makes popular fighters more lucrative, whereas the people controlling the rankings should simply rank based on skill and not popularity. So you see where there's a problem? When the people who rank are the same people who promote fighters, the people who promote are incentivized to rank those who are more popular higher and give those who are more popular title shots. A champ that is 
more popular will make a whole lot more money than a champ that isn't popular. This is what causes Colby to get title shots and Mighty Mouse to get released despite being such a dominant champ. All in all, the fight business is still a business. Dana White will always... Even, even you a dominant champ, he still... Dana White don't even shock you, like, damn. Push the guy that can sell pay-per-view buys over somebody else who can't sell pay-per-view buys even if that other guy is more deserving of the title shot. And this is why Dana White privilege exists. Okay, that's the red light on. So yeah, let me know what y'all think, bro. Like, like, do y'all think Dana Wright has a right to do that? Or do y'all think he's wrong? Let me know, bro. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Y'all know the vibes. We're just looking how you are.